Hi and welcome to today's video. So today is going to be topic number two in the topic of differentiation. So this is the follow up to the introduction. So today I'll be showing you how to differentiate using the first principles. How does this work? This is just a method that is required for just basic understanding for anyone doing differentiation in pure mathematics. Alright, let's learn how to differentiate using first principles. Alright, so today we'll look at differentiation by first principles and that's going to be our concept for today. So this is done by use of slope of a curve and then the limit is taken. If y is a function of x and y is made a subject in terms of x, then the function is called an explicit function. Here, differentiation from first principles will only consider an explicit function. Alright, so now imagine you are given this question, differentiate x squared plus 1 from first principles. Obviously, when you look at this, if you've watched the first video, you already know the answer to this question. You know that if we differentiate this and try to get a dy dx, you know the answer should be equal to 2x. But now the difference is we've been shown that we have to have to solve this from first principles. So how are we going to do that? So first of all, we want to let y to be equal to x squared plus 1. Alright, so now to find the derivative of a function y being equal to that, we use the slope formula in this case of first principles. Now you remember that the formula for slope is change in y over change in x. So now this is what we're going to be representing. So now we're going to be representing this. So this is going to be represent this is the sign we're going to be using to represent change in x, and then this is going to be representing change in y. So there are going to be a small change in x and y respectively. And then we're going to illustrate this in a diagram. So now this is our curve here. And then imagine we want to find the slope to this curve. So we find it by first knowing where the tangent passes. And then this is how we actually illustrate it. So now that's the point where we have x, uh, we have x, the value of x and 0. And then to move to this point here, so we now have a change in x represented there. And then that is going to represent the change in y right there. So we're going to be using this knowledge to actually solve this. So what you can see is x changes from x to uh, x to x plus change in x. And then we can also see that y changes from uh, the value that we've been given here. It changes from x squared plus 1 to x plus uh, change in x squared plus 1. And then now we're going to follow these steps. So first of all, we're going to fill in the slope formula. So now the slope formula is the formula change in y over change in x. So we're going to fill in that formula. And then we're going to simplify that formula as best as we can. And then after that, to solve the answer we're, and to get the final answer, we're going to make the change in x shrink towards zero. And then after that, we'll actually have the answer that we are looking for. Alright, so let's deal with this one in practice. Alright, so now we have y plus change in y being equal to x plus change in x squared plus 1. And then as you can see, we're going to uh, take the y to the other side of the equal sign. So that's all going to have it right. So we're going to subtract it from the right hand side. But we remember that y is equal to x squared plus one. So we're going to substitute that for y. Then this is what we're going to have. Now next we can actually see that when we open the brackets we'll have a negative x squared minus one. And then next we're going to square these brackets that we have right here and then when we square them we end up having x squared plus 2x change in x plus change in x squared. Now we can actually see that some values cancel so this and this cancel then we can also see that the x squared values cancel and then we are left with 2x change in x plus change in x squared all right so next we're going to uh, uh fill in for the slope formula so the slope formula is change in y over change in x so for us to do that in this case we're going to divide change in x on both sides of the equal sign and this is what we end up having as you can see when we do that so this and this will reduce and remain with change in x and then this and this shall cancel so we now have change in x over ch i mean change in y over change in x and this is actually the slope formula being equal to 2x plus change in x now next we know that now we're going to shrink uh change in x towards zero from this formula so now to get the dy dx value we're going to have make 
to make change in x be equal to zero so this is what we're going to end up having so now where there is uh change in uh change in y over change in x we're going to put there a dy dx being equal to 2x and then after that wherever there is change in x we place a zero and then this is what we end up having so dy dx shall be equal to 2x and that is how we solve this example using first principles and like i told you at the beginning we already know clearly that x squared plus one uh, when you differentiate it's going to be 2x uh, as the final answer but basically this is how we do it using first principles so it's actually important for you to know so now the good thing about this is you can actually solve a number with first principles when you already know the answer you're supposed to get and that is actually i think that's an exciting prospect all right let's look at another example to get better at this so we're being asked to differentiate x to the power half from first principle so how we're going to do this so we're going to let y be equal to x to the power half and then we know that x to the power half can also be represented as uh, root of x so that's basically the same thing then now we're going to have y plus change in y we're going to equate uh, both of the changes we're going to equate both of them so y plus change in y shall be equal to so there is a, and the x we're going to now substitute that with a change in x and then this is what we end up having so now we're going to take the y to the other side of the equal sign so change in y shall be equal to root x plus change in x minus y but remember that y is equal to root x so we're going to substitute that right there and then now we have to find a way of eliminating that root but what better way than rationalizing so that's why we've changed this into a fraction putting it over one so that you can rationalize and eliminate that root so now rationalizing the numerator is going to help us emit the root so we're going to end up having that that means we're going to multiply both the top and the bottom by the value that is uh is different from this but where there is a plus sign both at the top and the bottom and then when we do that we can actually see that the roots at the top disappear then we are left with x plus change in x minus x i mean x plus change in x brackets minus x over root of x plus change in x plus root of x now we can see at the top that the x values cancel and then we are left with change in x at the top all right so the next thing is now we want to eliminate the i mean we now want to introduce the slope formula so we're going to divide all through by changing x then we're going to have the change in y over change in x being equal to one over root of x plus change in x plus root of x all right so something important that we actually have to remember here is every time we uh, reach towards the end when we want to introduce the divide x to actually make this value of change in x that is remaining to be equal to zero we have to avoid uh, leaving a zero alone at the denominator because that will actually introduce an error and the calculator can't solve that but as you can see that now it is actually safe to introduce a zero here because uh will actually not remain with a zero at the end of it so it's now safe so now we can actually see that dy dx is equal to limit uh so we're going to we're going to shrink the change in x to zero so dy dx shall be equal to that so as you can see where there is change in x we're going to introduce a zero then you can actually see at the, at the denominator we now have root of x plus root of x and that is actually a safe thing to do so now the final answer of dy dx shall be one over two root x and that's how we solve this number all right now let's move on to question number three so this is more of a fraction form so i've been told to differentiate one over x plus one from first principles all right so now we're going to let y to be equal to one over x plus one and then now we can also see that y plus change in y shall be equal to one over x plus change in x plus one so as you can see basically where there is a y you introduce and add a change in y and then where there is an x you introduce and add a change in x as easy as that so now we're going to take the y to the right hand side so we're going to have a minus y on that side but remember that y is equal to one over x plus one so now we have change in y being equal to one over x plus change in x plus one minus one over x plus one so now we find the lcm right there and the lcm shall be equal to this that we see right there now when you get this this value at the denominator divide by 
that we actually are left with the x plus 1 and then we multiply it by 1 we are left with that minus so we get this value again divide by x plus 1 and we are left with this value here so now we we'll multiply that to 1 we are left with that now we and can now open brackets so we now can see now we will have x plus 1 but because of the negative sign here there will actually be a change in sign so we have x plus 1 minus x minus change in x minus 1 over the lcm now at the top we can actually see that x values cancel the ones cancel and you're left with negative change in x over the denominator that we actually have there so now we're going to divide all through by change in x and then this is what we will left with now as i can already see that after i have the slope formula already created i can already see it's actually safe to make the change in x on the right hand side be equal to zero so now we can actually see we're going to introduce the dy dx and then where there is change in x we're going to introduce a zero then this is what we're going to be left with so now x plus 0 plus 1 is actually equal to x plus 1 so x plus 1 times x plus 1 is x plus 1 squared and that's going to be our answer for dy dx all right question number four we have x over 1 plus x squared from first principles we're being asked to differentiate that so how do we solve this so we're going to let y be equal to that and then you can actually see that now where there is a y we're going to change introduce a y plus change in y then where there is an x we're going to introduce our x plus change in x but now the difference in this number is we can introduce it both to the x at the numerator and also to the x in the denominator and that's what we end up having now we can actually take the y to the right hand side so that we have a minus y change in y shall be equal to that but remember that y is equal to x over 1 plus x squared so now when we substitute that now next step is to find the lcm of that denominator so now the lcm shall be equal to this value you can actually see right there so when you have this value at the bottom divide by this we are left with one plus x squared then one plus x squared times this that's why we end up having that and then now when we get this value at the denominator divide by this we are left with that and then we can get this times x this is what we are left with all right so next we're going to open the brackets at the numerator so when you open those brackets uh, so we actually have to do that very carefully so that we actually don't make any mistake so this is what we end up having so i've actually chosen to open them as uh, slowly so that i avoid any mistakes and i can already see that there are actually a lot of values that cancel so x cubed values cancel x and x cancel i can also see uh, i think that's basically that's basically it then i can also say that we have this value here minus this value here so we're going to be left with a negative a negative x squared change in x and that's actually why we have it here so basically this is what we're left with at the numerator all right so now next when we move on to the next uh part of this uh so basically that's that's what we're left with at the numerator so now next thing i can actually set i can actually extract uh, a change in x from the top and pull it out of brackets i can actually factorize that out and that's what we're actually left with so now next i can actually multiply both sides by one over change in x so that i'll have the slope formula on the left hand side so when i do that this change in x cancels and this is what we're actually left with right there all right so now next find dy dx i can actually see it's already safe to uh introduce the to introduce the dy dx and then we're going to shrink the change in x towards zero so we're going to put a zero we have change in x and i see it's already safe because we will not have a zero remaining at the denominator and then this is what we end up having so now i'm left with that so now i have one x plus zero is basically x so now i have one plus x squared at the denominator so now i have one plus x squared times one plus x squared i now will have 1 plus x squared bracket squared and then at the top uh, x times 0 shall be equal to 0 so i'm left with 1 minus x squared and therefore dy dx shall be equal to 1 minus x squared over brackets 1 plus x squared squared and that's our final answer thank you so much for watching 
Thank you so so much for watching this video. I hope the video really really helped you. If it did, feel free to share the video with all your friends and help as many as you can. And then if you really like the video, feel free to give the video a like or a thumbs up. And then tell me in the comments if the video really helped you and I'll try to get time and reply to your comments. And then if you're new to this channel, I encourage you to join the community by subscribing. And then make sure to hit that notification bell so that you get updated every single time I upload a new video. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video.